Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Welcome. And have you ever wanted to make a real impact in the lives of other people? I mean, even more than just an impact, have you wanted to have such an impact that transformed hearts and actually added value to someone's life? We're going to talk about that today on the special edition of Heartline Ministries. Stay tuned. Well, again, welcome back. And uh, as we started off this episode, we asked you the question of, would you like to make a lasting impact in the lives of other people? And we want to cover that issue today. Um, and you might notice that I am not Pastor Harold Noyes. Pastor Harold is actually away on vacation. And so we're having a special edition um, episode today. We actually have some guests with us that we'll introduce to you a little bit in a little uh, while from now. What I want to do first, though, is I want us to take a look at a passage of Scripture, and it's out of Luke chapter 10, and we're going to be starting at verse 2. And this is an area where I believe that we get a really good glimpse at how it is that we can really make a lasting impact, the way that God had actually designed for us to do that. We do welcome you to Heartline. As you know, we do talk about matters of the heart here, our own heart as well as the hearts of other people. And as we get ready to get into this passage in Luke chapter 10, let's just start with a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you so much for this time that we have together. We ask that you would inhabit this time, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would uh, make a lasting change in us um, as we begin to really explore what it means to live a life of purpose, a life of fulfillment according to your ways and your design. And we give you honor, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So I said, I want us to look at Luke chapter 2, um, or Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 2. And I'm actually going to be reading out of the uh, English Standard Version this morning. And we'll actually have this, the verses up there on the screen for you. So it says there, He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. And what we see here really in a pattern is this was Jesus talking. And he was making it very clear of that there's people ready to enter into the kingdom. And what we need to do is we need to go out to where they are. But he showed us how to exactly go about doing that if we want to have a lasting impact. And he started by saying, go and pray for them. Go and bless them. And as you do... Be willing to enter into their homes. Go in and build relationship with them. And then as you've done that, then heal the sick. Begin to minister to their needs. Meet them right where they're at. And once you've done that, then share the gospel with them. And share about why it is that you are even doing these things and that you're doing it in the name of Christ. And we too many times get that reversed. And uh, so but that's the pattern he gives us. And we have the privilege this morning to be able to not just talk about this, not just to have, present you with this passage of scripture, 
But just like you may want to make that lasting impact, we all have that desire. And I actually have sit sitting next to me a couple of dear friends, uh, Mike and Carol Gibson. They are from the King's Table. And this is a very special ministry. And you guys have actually done this very thing. As I've looked back, as I looked at this passage of Scripture, you went through a lot of these channels. You you'd spent a lot of time in prayer before this ministry ever got started. You've been all about building relationship with people, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. meeting specific mm -hmm. needs, and in the midst of that, you've shared the gospel. And God is bringing forth a lot of fruit through this. And so we yes. thought it would be really good for people uh, to be able to hear, because we've got a lot of people that are in this area mm -hmm. that would love to maybe be a part of this ministry, because so many probably don't even know that this exists, because it's so such a rare ministry. And, but there's also people that we know that are watching all over the country, 31 different states, 15 different countries. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, God might want to speak to some of their hearts about getting something like the King's Table started in their area mm -hmm. to begin to see souls really affected and hearts truly changed for the glory of God. And yes. so we want to take some time just to give you some moments to be able to share with us. But before we get too much into the King's Table, I was wondering if you would just tell us a little bit about your own history. Where have you been? I, you guys aren't, I don't think, originally from New England, uh, or else if you are, you didn't always minister here. Um, so just share a little bit about where you've been, um, especially as it pertains to ministry. That's right, Pastor Tim. We're, we're not originally from here. Oh, by the way, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you for a minute because I am so bad. I'm not used to playing Harold's role here. Um, <laughs> my name is Pastor Tim. I'm with Life on Main. Uh, we meet in Charlestown, New Hampshire. And Harold Noyes, who is not able to be with us, he is uh, my co-host normally, and he pastors a church in Athens, Vermont, called Community Christian Church. And so I want to make sure we got that information out there. And, of course, you guys are Mike and Carol Gibson, <laughs> and are. you are from the King's Table. You have yes. kind of... Not that you actually started this ministry. It was actually had some a different form before the Lord laid it on your heart. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But back mm -hmm. to my original question, okay. um, you know, tell us a little bit yeah. about yourselves. Well, originally we are from we actually we lived in Arizona, um, and we met in Arizona. Mike Carol and I met there mm -hmm. at the same church, and that's when God really saved us and filled us with the Spirit. And at that time, uh, God called us to the ministry, and he gave us a missionary heart, uh, a real calling from God. It was real. And so from that point on, uh, God led us to Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Texas, to go to Bible school there, in the Christ for the Nations Institute, uh, where we received a lot of training there. And, um, and we served the church there in Dallas, in the Dallas area, so many churches that we were in contact with. Um, we served in different capacities in the church, and but we always had a missionary heart to reach out to people, and especially those that didn't know the Lord and that needed uh, salvation, needed God's love in their lives. And so from that point on uh, in Dallas, we also lived in the inner city where we uh, ministered to many people of diversified backgrounds, cultures, uh, prostitutes, alcoholics, drug addicts, for five or six years we were living in the inner city. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had outreach teams that come to the inner city to minister to children there as we had our door. It was like a revolving door mm -hmm. open to ministry all the time. And so we uh, had that experience there. And then we were led to, we, God led us to go to the Northeast, to New England here, to... Uh, uh, to seek what God had for us here. Actually, um, we got connected with Life Fellowship in 2005. We actually moved here in 2002, and uh, we sought out the Lord. We were seeking for a church to get connected with, and we found Life Fellowship, uh, Four Square Church in Charlestown. And that was 2005. And so then, we felt led uh, with our experience and background to start different ministries in the church, Life Fellowship. We started uh, marriage ministry. We've started the, life, the men's ministry. We've started um, nursing home ministry. Um, we also uh, started missions in the church at that mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So God just put it on our hearts uh, in the church to start these ministries. Mm -hmm. 
And interesting enough, I believe all those ministries are actually still going on in some form, yes, they are. even yes. to this day. Yes, That's they are. That's pretty cool. Yes, they are. It is very cool, and we are so thankful. And then God kind of changed the focus from in the church to outside the church. Um, but it actually started with the uh, King's Table. Well, actually, it wasn't King's Table ministry at that time. It was a Bible club ministry that some women had started from the church. And we were over missions at that time, so they came to us and wanted to start this ministry to adults with disabilities. Mm-hmm. So we were all in favor of that. So we did. I mean, we... we uh, Got behind that, and uh, after a period of time, um, Carol can show you a little bit more about that. How how it got started? Yeah, how it initially. got started. Yeah. Uh, well, we had, like Mike was saying, there was uh, there were some women in the church who really had a heart to reach out to those with disabilities, mm-hmm. and they came and talked to us. We thought it was a great idea, and they did, and they called it the Bible Club. And there were uh, a few people that were attending our church and that lived in the community that used to come on a regular basis. And they would tell Bible stories and they would do an arts and crafts project and uh, usually have a snack. And sometimes they'd take a trip out into the community and everybody really loved it. But over time, what happened is a lot of people moved away. And so the Bible club was discontinued. But we had people in our home that used to attend the Bible club, and they were heartbroken. And they said, we really want to go to the Bible club. When is the Bible club going to start again? And so Mike and I prayed about it, and along with some other people in the church, we got together and uh, decided to, to move the ministry from the church itself out into, more into the community. And so we wanted to find a central location where we could mm-hmm. meet. Um, so we contacted Pastor Jerry Piper from the United Methodist Church in mm-hmm. Springfield and asked if we could use space there because it was easily accessible for a lot of people in the mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. And she was so gracious, and she said, this is God's house. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever God wants to do in this house, this is his house, and yes, you can do it. So we've been there mm-hmm. for eight years, uh, mm-hmm. meeting in her church, which has really been a blessing. Mm-hmm. It's but, so great when you see Bible-believing churches being willing to not be territorial, you know, be able yeah. to unite together uh, like that. Yeah, yes. it's been such what a, a blessing. blessing, and she's mm-hmm. always been available, mm-hmm. you know, for us to be able to yes. have events there and to be able to use that space. Mm-hmm. So um, we did start out meeting there at the Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. We needed volunteers, and so we talked to some of our friends, people that we knew, um, Mm -hmm. and asked them if they'd be willing to work together with us, you know, Mm -hmm. to start the the ministry, and Mm -hmm. they said, yep, let's go for it. And before that, we had actually walked around Springfield and prayed for six months. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday afternoon, there were a group of us that uh, met, actually downtown Springfield and we covered every street and every neighborhood in the town of Springfield for six months every Mm -hmm. single Sunday we just divided up and went in different directions Mm -hmm. so I just believe that that this ministry is even a fruit of that time spent in prayer Mm -hmm. Um, then we needed a name for the ministry and we were praying about that again you know Lord what do you want us to call this Mm -hmm. and uh, we remembered the story of Mephibosheth can I read a scripture absolutely okay Um, so uh, for those of you who know about King David in the Bible uh, when before King David became king he had a friend of Jonathan who was uh, Saul's son and Jonathan had asked him to promise that uh, King David would always show kindness to King Saul's house And uh, after King David became king, he remembered that promise. And so he went to seek out any members that were still alive from Mm -hmm. King Saul's house. And in 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 3, the Bible says, The king then asked him, Is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Ziba replied, yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he, the king asked. In Lodabar, Ziba told him, at the home of Maker, son of Amiel. So David sent for him and brought him from Maker's home. His name was Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed down low to the ground in deep respect. David said, greetings, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. 
Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. Hence, that was the name that, of our ministry, the king's table. And that scripture really shows you the heart God has for those who have disabilities because mm -hmm. Mephibosheth was crippled in both feet. And, and in that time, people who had disabilities were really considered as useless. Mm -hmm. And even Mephibosheth thought he was a useless person. Mm -hmm. But King David had God's heart. He was a man after God's own heart. And so he reached out to Mephibosheth and invited him to come and sit at his table every day for the rest of his life. And so the mm -hmm. Lord showed us a good name for the ministry would be the king's table mm -hmm. because everyone is welcome. Mm -hmm. So what kind of people with, when you say people with disabilities, who is your, who is it that you're called to minister to specifically? Well, what, our, what, how, how would you incorporate, what, what would you define as people with our disabilities? Our ministry is to anybody, first of all, that walks through the door. <laughs> <laughs> and second of all, for those who have emotional, intellectual, and physical challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we specifically minister to adults 18 and over. Mm -hmm. wow. That's right. That's right. And you've been doing this for how long now? Since eight years. Yeah, Almost 2012. Eight years. Since mm -hmm. 2012. Eight years. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. that's just incredible. Yeah. Um, so when this all happened, was this even on your radar before this all kind of came to you? Was there another direction you kind of maybe thought God was beginning to lead? And then all of a sudden he intervened and said, "Know what? here's where we're going to direct you. Well, we already had our uh, Oikos group uh, kind of in place with well, what involved. do you mean by Oikos? When I say Oikos, Oikos group. group, Oikos group is a group that you normally relate to around you in your mm -hmm. environment kind of thing. And we were already mm -hmm. involved with Special Olympics sports with our daughter being having mm -hmm. special needs. And uh, we also are share living providers with an agency, HCRS in Springfield. Mm -hmm. So we have two men living with us uh, at this time. And we've always had someone living with us since 2002. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so that all played into that, that, that uh, initial starting of the king's table, mm -hmm. you know, the, what God put on our hearts. He'd already kind of set in place with that. And then our ministry experience, of course, all played in that and as far as wanting to reach out to people as a whole. Mm -hmm. But uh, Carol has a, has a background from in Arizona. She worked with uh, those with physical disabilities, intellectual, emotional disabilities, physical challenges mm -hmm. for many years. And I had a counseling background when I was uh, uh, in Arizona. And uh, I have a degree, a master's degree in counseling. And that all played in, in, in together to work towards a ministry called the King's Table. Mm. So, so like, so you had a lot of natural gifts that were already there, things that you had already honed in the natural realm, for lack of a better way to put it. And God somehow took your natural skills and put a supernatural twist on it. Yes, <laughs> you could say that. Yes, mm -hmm. you could. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Other thing, anything as far as what you've sensed as far as direction. How, you know, do you feel like this was the way God was kind of always leading? Or do you feel like at any point that things kind of I think felt like there was a shift? Different seasons in your life. Mm -hmm. And um, God did a lot of preparation mm -hmm. in us, you know, to bring us to this place um, through uh, just growing in our walk as a Christian and going to Christ for the Nations and being in the inner city and. We also ministered to people of other cultures uh, in northern Arizona. I used to go out and travel on the reservations and work with people setting up programs for preschoolers that had mm -hmm. disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. just all of the things that God has done in our past has mm -hmm. prepared us mm -hmm. for what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't that we were moving to Vermont expecting to do this, mm -hmm. but God's ordered our steps. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we're just willing to go wherever he leads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're involved in a church, and um, my understanding is you're actually pastors mm -hmm. at Life Fellowship. Yes. Um, yes. I think we have a similar connection there. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, 
Is that primarily where the people are coming from that, that you find at the King's Table? I mean, were these just people that were at life that just kind of, you saw the need there and it's just kind of that that's all there is? Or is there something more to it? Is there a bigger coverage area? Well, it's, it's, it covers uh, quite an area around uh, Vermont and New Hampshire. There's quite a few communities. So I'd say how many, 17? 12 towns. 12, 12 towns that we that people are coming from to the King's Table. Mm -hmm. And we wanted, to st we wanted to focus our ministry in Springfield, Vermont, because the, there's two agencies there mm -hmm. that serve a lot of uh, adults with disabilities. So we wanted to stay there as our home base. But, but we're open to anyone from the area can come. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said before, it's a unique ministry that we don't find other in other places. Mm -hmm. But we would love to see that uh, connect with other ministries uh, mm -hmm. that we can grow from and also be a blessing to. Yeah. As well. well, it seems to be a population that in so many churches have been brought up in the church myself and many across many different denominational lines. Um, and it's not that we ignore them. I think a lot of times it's just because of ignorance that we don't know how to minister. But this is a population mm -hmm. that very many times gets overlooked. I was going to say it's That's actually right. probably right. one of the most unreached, unreached populations, populations in New England. Mm -hmm. um, Liz Babbitt from Johnny and Friends New England um, travels around and sets up networking groups uh, for churches and mm -hmm. has heard story after story, not only of how churches are not serving people with disabilities, but how churches actually ask people with disabilities to leave and not come back. Mm. So yeah. there's a wow. certain amount of rejection. <laughs> and it is hard to believe for, for us. For us I mean, believe. because mm -hmm. our heart is just so in tune with what how great the need is and how wonderful mm -hmm. these people are. Yeah. You know, so it's hard for us to even mm -hmm. conceive of a church asking a person with a disability not mm -hmm. to come back or for their families not to return. But I was going to say, uh, related to the question you were asking before. When we first started out, we only advertised in the newspaper one time, and we had a man that came and brought one person, and we have mm -hmm. never advertised since that time. Mm -hmm. The ministry mm -hmm. has just grown by word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, and people do come from uh, long distances. We have people that come from Rutland, and even somebody that comes from Concord, and Washington, Vermont, and just long distances, but it's because there's not something like this available. So for, for those that, because like I said, we you know, have a lot of people from a lot of other states I know that tune into the program, um, from where you're located, how, what, what, what is the radius that you are currently reaching out f uh, you know, the, where you have people coming from. I sure don't really want to say that you're reaching out to, because like you said, you haven't really advertised. It's, right. The, but the word's yes. gotten out there. So where are you drawing? What, what what are the furthest reaches as far as from your central location? Probably, probably Concord, New Hampshire, from yeah, Springfield 100 to Concord. miles radius. Right, right which would be yeah, probably about 100 yep. miles, yeah. And uh, Rutland, Vermont, Rutland, Washington, sorry. New yeah. Hampshire. 35 miles. You know, so they which right there maybe goes, an hour and a half. Which right no, there goes to tell you, and, and it's just mind-blowing, that there would be that kind of a need that people would be willing to drive. Because you meet how often? Twice a month. Twice a month. Twice a month. Mm -hmm. You've got people driving upwards of 100 miles one way mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. come to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then 100 miles back. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And in addition, I mean, to the, that, the hunger <clears throat> that people have for this is is phenomenal. In addition to that, the people who come can't drive, so there's actually there's only one participant in the king's table who has mm -hmm. driver's so license, license and drives, and drives. car. Yeah. So wow. it means that all the people who yep. attend have to have somebody to bring them, mm. and um, so yeah. so that again takes a, a lot of commitment. And there's like four different agencies that serve the people in the King's Table. There's mm -hmm. like Pathways in New Hampshire and HCRS and Lincoln Street in Vermont mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, Specialized Care Center, which is uh, located in another part of the state in Vermont, mm -hmm. and then Easter Seals in Concord. Yeah. And so these agencies are, some of them are providing transportation for people who come to the King's yeah. Table. These are not even Christian organizations. Yeah. These are agencies that serve them, mm -hmm. or parents that bring them, or caregivers that bring them, mm -hmm. or people, some yes, of our please. volunteers actually right. um, 
give people rides in vans. <laughs> yeah. We have one person that brings like seven people. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about that. Because like you said, and I think that this is huge. Um, a lot of things about this is huge. But this is really because having been involved, not just as pastor, but also having worked in mental health uh, for mm -hmm. about 25 years uh, mm -hmm. in different levels. Um, the, the whole human service agencies is very humanistic. You yes, know, it is. It, is not, yes. it is not only mm -hmm. not Christian in its approach, it's actually on many levels is anti-Christian. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about the fact you're having the, some, some organizations that some people would probably call humanistic embracing this. What have you received any kind of verbal responses other than them just bringing people? What what's the general um, consensus out there th uh, through these other agencies? Well, one thing is that this agency that we serve, HCRS in Springfield, mm -hmm. God has given us favor. Mm -hmm. I think part of it is because we've been SLPs or shared living providers for so many years, mm -hmm. and we've been stable in that, mm -hmm. and also. <clears throat> we've been involved with Special Olympics and those type of things, that God has given us favor as far as being able to go there and sing Christmas carols. Mm -hmm. And God has opened the door for us to share mm -hmm. the good news through the Christmas carols. Uh, we can't be too Christian, quote, mm -hmm. uh, there. They tell us that, you know, we're not to be not too, too religious. religious yeah. Yeah. But we can share the love of God uh, and also, of course, pray for those we see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what, what do you attribute to this response? I think that it's because we've built relationship. Because, we, mm -hmm. like Mike said, we've been shared living <clears throat> providers for almost 18 years now with HCRS. And they know that we're sincere about the service that we're providing to the people that live with us. Mm -hmm. And we try to do a good job, and they respect that. And the people who bring individuals to the king's table from the agencies are respecting the rights of the participants because their philosophy is that their rights need to be honored and respected and that mm -hmm. that should be on the top of the agenda. And so when the, when the people they're serving say, today is the day for me to go out and I want to go to the king's table, they're honoring that, mm -hmm. and they're bringing them, they're giving them rides. Yeah. And so as a result of that, we have a lot of participants in the King's Table who are paid staff by the agencies who are also hearing the good news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's great. Which is amazing. That's great. It, it is. <laughs> it is. But, it's but really, it's they've been blessing. really supportive. I mean, we even had a prom in 2016, and HCRS paid $500 to rent the tables for the prom. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they've just really been, and we've even met with the agency over some issues with one of the participants, mm -hmm. and one of the therapists there said, this is a great opportunity for people to come together and socialize. Mm -hmm. They may not be looking at it necessarily from a Christian point of view, mm -hmm. but from their point of view, you've got all these people coming together from different agencies who have similar mm -hmm. needs that can develop relationships with each other. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of opportunities like that right. in the community. Yeah. yeah, and you hit on something I think is so, um, again, I, th I think so many times we do not spend enough time focusing on the church. You know, we, we like to focus on, well, we're here because of prayer. And I don't want to undermine or underestimate the importance of that. It's the most important piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. is prayer. I, mean, mm -hmm. I don't think you've had this favor apart from prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, um, mm -hmm. I think the, the said equally strong component that we too many times don't look at is that relational component. It, it's mm -hmm. the fact that they got to know you as people. Um, they saw your it's heart true. not only yeah. towards this population, they saw your heart towards the organization as a whole by how, because I said you were part of that organization, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you must have had some credibility within that organization. They saw something of your character mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis that opened them up to be able to receive mm -hmm. some of this. And I think that too many times we want... a uh, a quick approach, we want a microwave approach that I just need to be able to go in and just find that person a piece and I'll just have that, that in. But mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. it takes a lot of 
<coughs> tilling soil um, ov does. over a long That's period right. of time right. before you will actually get some of those open doors. And so not for us as people not to underestimate the importance of that, I think it is crucial. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me a little bit, because uh, we've talked about the King's Table, we know you meet, <coughs> now you meet on Wednesdays usually, at mm -hmm. what time? Uh, 1.30 to 3, the first and third Wednesdays of the month. Okay, so first and third Wednesdays uh, every month, regardless if it's a five-week month or... Well, right. Starting right. from October to June. Uh -huh. We have a summer break, and then we start up again in the fall. Yeah. And it's... <coughs> we'll still have a few months to get in before the, <laughs> the summer break. Okay. Yes. And it's, it seems to work out well, because otherwise, you know, if we had a typical Sunday service... We wouldn't be able to reach the people that we're reaching now, mm -hmm. for the most part, because they have direct service providers or, or caregivers that, that bring them to the meetings, like Carol was saying earlier, that they wouldn't come on Sunday to, you know, a service. Right. So we feel like that is a good time, and yet the volunteers that we have have been so faithful and so good. Uh, they're not getting paid for that. They're, we're all a team. We all work together, and yet um, we're always... We're praying for more volunteers, but uh, it's hard to get volunteers for that time of day because of everybody's working. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people that we have volunteers are, that are volunteers are older people like ourselves, either retired or you know in that age range where they're not having to work full time, mm -hmm. you know, be at a, at a job. So, so that's one of the challenges that we we pray that uh, you know. We prayed about whether we needed to change the time, but really we came back to the time that to this to the fact that, that that is such a good time that we're reaching more people that way, mm -hmm. with the staff, with the caregivers, with the, even the volunteers, mm -hmm. who come from all different denominations, mm -hmm. uh, Catholic, Congregational, Episcopal, Baptist, and it goes four square, four square, <laughs> of course, four square, and it plays into four squares vision for interdenominational unity mm -hmm. in the body. So in that place, we are really uh, in, a, in a good place, you know, mm -hmm. to reach those and bring unity. In fact, that's our theme for this year, mm -hmm. is unity of purpose, unity of mind, will, and what's the other one? Heart. Heart. <laughs> Heart. That's the main one. Heart. And those are those are the themes that we have for this, this year that we always uh, pray about before, and then we got to... Mm -hmm. Some people would say, you've been, now you've been doing this for this many years, and this, and, and it's not to say that people are a burden. So I don't want people to hear that, but people would say that working with those that have disabilities, those that have special needs, is a very draining. I mean, if you look at the statistics um, in agencies and things, there's usually a very high turnover rate. Uh, because of the level of burnout that, that can take place um, mm -hmm. working with such a population. Mm -hmm. You don't seem to be experiencing the burnout rate <laughs> in, in your ministry. <laughs> you just seen us today. I'm, I'm not saying you don't get we tired. Have meltdown but, periods. <laughs> you know, um, no, every we, ministry no. is a challenge. It doesn't matter what it is. Every when ministry, we lived in the inner city, ministry. you talk about burnout. That's city. a ministry that yeah. burns you out. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to tell you that ministry to people with disabilities is so exciting because you see people whose hearts are genuine. Mm -hmm. When they say something, it comes right straight from their heart, mm -hmm. you know, in their mind, right out of their mouth. Yeah. And you see people who love to mm -hmm. pray. You see people who love to worship. Mm -hmm. You see people who are faithful and consistent. Mm -hmm. What church doesn't want that? You yeah. know, I mean, <laughs> we have people in our in our King's Table ministry who wanted to start a prayer ministry, uh -huh. and uh, and they have they've started a prayer ministry, and it mm -hmm. goes on before we meet from one o'clock to one thirty. Mm -hmm. There's a group of people that show up early so mm -hmm. that they can pray together and seek God and pray for needs. Yeah. They come running in the door. When are we going to pray? And they go in the mm -hmm. prayer room, which actually is a storage closet. <laughs> and they're so excited because they have that opportunity to cry out to Prayer God. closet. Prayer so closet. that's the thing that, that prevents burnout mm -hmm. because when you see people's lives changing and mm -hmm. you see them growing and you see their commitment and their sincerity, um, you see their tears 
They mm -hmm. they pour out their hearts real. when they have real. issues that they're facing, like mm -hmm. somebody died in their family, or mm -hmm. they lost their girlfriend, you know, mm -hmm. or they can't find a job. They have a place where they can go and come together with others who will pray with them and agree with yeah. them and support them and encourage them mm -hmm. because people in the king's table have the same needs as everybody else yeah. and right. they it often goes overlooked mm -hmm. you know it's like they just don't but so they aren't taken seriously mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah and, it, and the name of our prayer group is the prayer warriors and that came from a member of the king's table that that it's really driven by the members of the King's Table, mm -hmm. not so much by the volunteers, although Casey Strand is, is working with them, uh, facilitating the prayer mm -hmm. group. But it's amazing, the testimonies that we hear, too, mm -hmm. the answered prayer, you know. Yeah. Well, I know it was a pleasure, pleasure for me, uh, this last uh, meeting that you guys had, to be able to be there. And I was actually there to help out with a couple of other things, but I was also there with a secondary motive to be able to kind of go behind the scenes and um, talk with, to, just to kind of do a little investigative reporting, if you will, for a moment. <laughs> um, but I talked with, because uh, it, it was very encouraging to walk in and see how many people were just there, like I said, early. You know, and I'm talking, I'm talking an hour early yes. be, before <laughs> things started, just hanging out early. and just being being with one another and loving it. But it's yeah. not just the the those that you're ministering to. It was talking with those that are working there. Mm -hmm. the people that I know that have been working with you guys for a number of years now, that by now should be starting to show signs of real burnout. Mm -hmm. And every single one of them, all I heard was how fulfilling this ministry is. And that in some ways they, and though these words weren't used directly, it was in everything that they had to share that in a lot of ways, they feel like they get more out of it than what they are pouring into it. And again, not that it doesn't yeah. have its hard times. It will. Like I said, every ministry will. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when you're doing things that God wants you to do, it has a way of energizing you versus burning you out, it's which is, I giving. think, the key. It is. Yes, it is. And uh, so what does a general, for, for those that maybe have never been to the king's table, what's the general outline um, of a typical day, a typical, typical Wednesday for you meetings. Guys. Yeah. Well, the first thing is we first have the prayer group. We just talked about the prayer mm -hmm. warriors meet for a half hour of prayer. Then we open up the meeting with prayer. <laughs> well, we start with prayer, and then we have good start. <laughs> good start. <laughs> and then we have praise and worship, and we really want to use that time to teach our members to truly worship the Lord, truly really learn to enter in his presence and, and express their worship in various ways. And so we have two, two uh, worship teams, one from Vermont and one from New Hampshire. We're having a meeting this next Wednesday and we talked about, um, I don't know if Carol touched on this, the um, Lampstand Story Company is coming next Wednesday mm -hmm. and they're gonna be videotaping our meeting and they're also coming to our home. <laughs> they're doing a, um, all this to promote disability ministry awareness, and it will be shown in Denver, Colorado, at the Four Square Convention this mm -hmm. May. Yeah, which will have pastors from churches all over the world, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is amazing. So that um, um, in this ministry that we have, uh, uh, the meeting goes from from the prayer and the worship to a teaching. We usually have a teaching or a theme, like I shared with you, there's a theme this year of unity. Mm -hmm. So we share scriptures, we share the word. Mm -hmm. We have skits sometimes. We have a lot of fun with those skits. And we get everybody going with those skits. And then we have puppets too. We have a few puppets, uh, Buddy and Sugar, mm -hmm. who uh, do some you know, memory scripture type things and other things as well. And then, uh, we also, by the time the meeting's about over with, um, well, we do also special events too. We go out, reach out. We've been to Life Fellowship where we had um, Palm Sunday service. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also gone to a church in Hubbardton, historic yeah. church, to do a presentation there. And so, but then by the time we have our meeting, it's about over with, we have snack time, which is always important too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody likes their snacks, and so we do that as a time of fellowship and connecting. But uh, I think that may, may, a lot of people can see the, I can see the 
social connectedness of this having a meeting like this too because people are coming from all over and it gives them an opportunity to connect with each other at this time not only for spiritual reasons but social because there's so much of a isolation isolated feeling living in new england vermont new hampshire where you're living in a small community and you feel like you know kind of isolated from the rest of the world so mm -hmm. to speak where this brings people together and it, it mm -hmm. really is served to to help them feel they'll feel not to feel lonely but to develop relationships like mm -hmm. you're talking about it's very important yeah. so it almost sounds like to me to kind of put it into strange verbiage just the way my mind works if a regular church service and vacation bible school were to have a baby king's table would be what it would look like it's kind of almost like a in some ways it's kind of almost like a vacation bible school for adults it is, yes in some ways it, it, it's 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 not just the fun of the games it really is a very intense time it really Absolutely. is a time of pressing into the presence of god like yes, you would with is. a normal church service but yes. it has some of yes. these components fun components if you will that help to really as i said build that um social connect um so you're really feeding the body, the mind, and the spirit. Yes. You're, yes. You know, all three of them, really. That's true. And one of the reasons that we use that approach with the King's Table is because we want the message that we're trying to deliver mm -hmm. uh, to be presented in a way that can be understood. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, when we do our worship time, the songs that we use are shortened mm -hmm. and the words are bigger because a lot of the people in the mm -hmm. King's Table have difficulty reading and some of them can't read at all. Mm -hmm. But um, we try to present everything in a way that everybody can really fully understand and participate in. Mm -hmm. So nice. every message, we try and make it, mm -hmm. just bring it alive mm -hmm. so that they really can get the re what we're trying to say. So Wednesdays is a big piece of the King's Table, but obviously Wednesdays isn't what it's all about either. You guys do a lot of other activities. You've kind of met, alluded to a couple of them. Um, throughout our discussion so far. But what other sorts of things do you guys do uh, with these guys? So we like to get them out in the community um, mm -hmm. as a group. Um, and so Christmas time, we usually do Christmas carols. We've done Christmas carols at a couple of nursing homes, actually right out on the street in Springfield. And as mm -hmm. we were singing, people were waving and clapping and honking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've gone to HCRS to sing Christmas carols, which has really been fun. We've done that um, how many times now? So th three times? Three times, HCRS. Three times, yeah. uh, we've uh, done presentations at churches. We went to Hubberton, Vermont, and did a special presentation, and we did a Palm Sunday service at Life Fellowship. Uh, we've gone on day trips, field trips. We've gone mm -hmm. to Clark's Trading Post mm -hmm. up in the White Mountains and mm -hmm. the Butterfly Museum in Massachusetts and... Last year we went to Lake Winnipesaukee, uh, mm -hmm. which was really fun for a rail and sail trip all day long. And in the summer, uh, we like to go to camp. Mm -hmm. And since we mm -hmm. started, we began by going to Johnny and Friends Camp. I don't know if you're familiar with Johnny Erickson Tata, mm -hmm. but she has a wonderful ministry for people mm -hmm. with disabilities and mm -hmm. runs mm -hmm. camps across the nation. Mm -hmm. And we joined yeah. that camp for several years until we outgrew it. And then we had to start our own. Yeah. So last uh, camp, we went to uh, Camp Spofford and did our own camp. And this year we're going to Pittsfield, Massachusetts, to mm -hmm. Lakeside Christian Camp. And so we do try and do a lot out in the community with the group mm -hmm. that we have, um, mm -hmm. not just to keep it right there in that location. And we really encourage the members of the King's Table to reach out to their friends mm -hmm. and to the community around them because they have a lot of good things to, to share. Uh -huh. And so, and that brings up the other point. You, you've had a chance to really network with some real big ministries like Johnny and Friends. Uh, mm -hmm. I know Johnny and Friends is pretty much very nationally well known. If people have listened to Christian radio, mm -hmm. uh, you've probably heard Johnny on there. Um, We've met if her. people ever met watched her. the old we Billy Graham Crusades, yeah. I remember growing up a number of times. She was usually the one that he would have on the platform in a wheelchair. She did paintings with her mouth and yes. mm -hmm. things of that nature. Amazing, and so amazing. she's been around for a while. And um, but yeah, the fact that you've had those connections o over the years has been very helpful, I think, for you as well. What that sure when we has. first it's started the King's Table, we really wanted to try and find people who've already done something in this area, mm -hmm. and uh, we had heard of Johnny and Friends, mm -hmm. and so we contacted them. Uh, they're in, they have a main office in New Hampshire, 
And so we called and they were so helpful. They encouraged us. They gave mm -hmm. us materials when we first started. Mm -hmm. They invited us to come down for a day and visit their camp. So we had 11 of us went down there to visit the camp before we even started the mm -hmm. King's Table. Mm -hmm. And just to be able to learn from them and to gain from their experiences. Yeah. And so we've continued that relationship with them and they're just really a blessing. Yeah. And also, there's a networking group through Foursquare that is a special needs network mm -hmm. that just started last year. And what they're doing is trying to give people who, who have ministries to people with disabilities mm -hmm. an opportunity to be able to connect to with connect. each other, yeah. to be able to re share resources mm -hmm. and encourage one another. Mm -hmm. And so this networking group... Um, has been instrumental in having the Lampstand Film Company come out and film the King's Table next week so that mm -hmm. they can share it at the convention. Mm -hmm. So we're, we desperately would love to be in touch with anybody who has a ministry to individuals with disabilities because mm -hmm. we can really learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'd like yeah, to have that okay. opportunity to, yeah. to share. Well, would you mind just sharing? Because like I said, there's gonna, there are probably people out there that would love to share some resources. There are probably other people that are tuning in. They're like, wow, this is starting to really um, prick something in their own hearts of something they maybe want to do uh, to maybe reach out mm -hmm. to their community. Uh, how can people get in touch with you guys um, to maybe share some of their information or to get some information from you? What's the mm -hmm. best way to do that? Well, the way that I think would be the most Practical would be to contact um, Life Fellowship mm -hmm. in Charlestown, New Hampshire. Um, if there, or you can give if you want to give or just pray for our ministry or give. You can go to the website or better yet, you can, you can mail in uh, support. If you're financial want to support us as a ministry, mm -hmm. you can uh, send it to us uh, and just make it just send it to the church, Life Fellowship, to home, our home church is Life Fellowship in Charlestown. Mm -hmm. You can send it to the Life Fellowship and just put it in the memo line, King's Table Ministry, mm -hmm. and that would get it to us. Yeah. Sure. And or, a question, address for the uh, for those that maybe life. are tuning in, if you do want to send that, uh, send some support in, or even just a letter of encouragement to these guys, uh, the address would be Life Fellowship at 85 Wheeler Rand, R-A-N-D Road, in Charlestown, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. 036. Mm -hmm. Zero three again, mm -hmm. eighty five Wheeler Rand Road, Charlestown, New Hampshire zero three six zero three. And I was going to say, if, if people just want to talk to us about the ministry or share resources mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. would like any information that we can share with them, they're welcome to call us. Mm -hmm. Our number is eight zero two eight eight six one three nine six, or email us. Email which is, is a long, is email. A long email. It's Aquila. Aquila. Can you spell Aquila? A Q U I L A Priscilla P R I S C I L L A at Vermontel. It's V E R M O N T E L dot net. So it's Aquila Priscilla at vermontel.net. Make sure Aquila, Aquila has one L, L. Priscilla <laughs> has two <laughs> L's. <laughs> as you, you know, it. Aquila and Priscilla are mentioned in the Bible as traveling with Paul. <laughs> uh -huh. that's our and Bible that's become names. our, our uh -huh. second identity. Aquila yeah. and Priscilla. Here mm -hmm. we are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Aquila Priscilla has no underscore, it has no space. No. It's just no. one one long word. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so get, do get in touch with them. If you're a telemarketer, don't. Right. Okay, uh, but um, <laughs> but if you are genuinely wanting to learn more about that ministry or want information, please don't hesitate um, to contact them. I mean, what you guys are doing is absolutely phenomenal. It is so great. Um, we need more of these ministries across this nation and around the world mm -hmm. um, because it is amazing that, as you said, we too many times this population isn't just overlooked; they are undervalued. Absolutely. And Absolutely. We, you right. know, too many churches, they look and they see, the, see them as a burden rather than seeing them as God's children, just like you and I, you know, right. we are all his, right? <laughs> if we name the name of Christ and we all have a soul and he wants to reach us and we need to get the message out no matter what culture you go to. And this is Missions 101, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever yeah. culture you go to, you have to speak the language of that culture. 
-hmm. And you guys have found a way to do that effectively to reach this culture called special needs. It's not talking down to, it's talking their language. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we need to know more as the body of Christ of how to do that effectively. And it's just great that you guys are doing it, that you're really paving the way in many, many ways. And so we thank you guys for that. Well, we we've, we've are so thankful for the connections we have made and mm -hmm. with Pastor Dave and Cindy Grasso being pastors of Life Fellowship as being very supportive of mm -hmm. those with disabilities in our church at Life Fellowship, yeah. uh, giving them opportunities to serve uh, by taking offerings and just mm -hmm. supporting our ministry in so many ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we, we are getting financial support from Life Fellowship uh, for a small amount to help so help uh, with the cost of using a building at the United Methodist mm -hmm. Church. So Life Fellowship is supporting yeah. us in that way. Life on Main with Pastor Tim has been supporting us and uh, that's been a real mm -hmm. great blessing to have that kind of support yeah. to, to be able to provide the, for the resources that we need. Right. And because uh, we do, of course we do have the shirts that we have here, our members all wear and volunteers. Mm -hmm. So we, we, that's a continual cost to pay for the shirts. And also mm -hmm. we have Action Bibles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these are Bibles are given out to the members. Uh, when yeah. they become a member, we give them a a free right. action Bible, a free shirt. Yeah. So there's a lot of other ministry costs that are involved that we really, that you could really use some funds to help yes, um, yes. With, with fraying some of those costs because obviously this is a population that does not have a lot of money. You don't have that privilege, privilege of taking offerings. So whatever you can do out there to help support them would be great. Well, I've been given the high sign from the window, and uh, so our amazing our hour is up already. The it always is, does fly yeah. like uh, amazing. incredibly. Amazing. Uh, we've been doing this for many years, and I'm still amazed how quick it goes. But again, we thank you for tuning into Heartline today. Please contact Mike and Carol if you have any questions. Uh, on behalf of Harold Noyes, um, if you're in the Athens, Vermont area, they have their services every Sunday morning at 9.30 on the lower road, also known as Brookline Road in Athens, and uh, goes till about 11 o'clock. Uh, they have Sunday school to follow. Uh, they have also small groups that meet uh, various locations throughout the week. Please call the church office there and they will be happy uh, to get you plugged into any of those groups. But do come on out uh, for their services and enjoy a great time of the Word and a great time in worship. And if you're in the Charlestown area, we invite you to come on out to Life on Main. We meet at the old St. Luke's Episcopal Building at 176 to 188 Main Street in downtown Charlestown. Uh, we meet at uh, 11 o'clock. Sunday mornings we do have coffee at 10 o'clock to make sure you're thoroughly awake for the message and uh, we have a great time of worship as well. Um, we also have small groups we'd like to plug you into and of course uh, Life Fellowship that Mike and Carol go to meets uh, about four miles up the road from there at 85 Wheeler Rand Road. Uh, those services are at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. on Sunday mornings also with small groups that happen during the week. You can call the office there at 603-826-3979 for more information. Again, we thank you so much for tuning into Heartline. Let your friends know about the show, um, and if they are outside our viewing area, direct them to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Heartline Ministries. And if you're viewing from outside the area, just drop us a little note there. Let us know where you're tuning in from, because uh, we do like to keep a little map of where we're reaching, and we also pray over those towns um, for God to really be able to make an impact there. So again, thank you so much. May God bless you.